Welcome back to Press View. Let's start by taking a look at today's front pages in the Middle East. Starting in Saudi Arabia, the Arab News leaders front page reporting that a prominent labor expert has suggested that the kingdom will require expatriate manpower in various sectors over the next 40 years. The paper also reports that Islamic scholars and human rights officials of the world's largest Muslim organization denounced the mass kidnapping of Nigerian schoolgirls by the militant group Boko Haram as a gross misinterpretation of Islam. The Jerusalem Post leads reporting that in a sudden turnaround, Batyam Mayor Shlomo Lahiani cut a free bargain with the state, leading to the Tel Aviv Magistrates Court to convict him on multiple charges of breach of public trust and fraud. It also reports that the Jordan Valley Regional Council has a 10-year plan to triple its population to help ensure that its date farms and hilltop communities won't be handed over to the Palestinians as part of a final status agreement for a two-state solution. The UAE's Gulf News reports that the Emirates Group will issue the Dubai government a 1 billion dirham dividend following the announcement yesterday of a 31.6 cents increase in profits to 4.1 billion dirhams. The paper also reports that Saudi Arabia's health minister said the talk about developing a vaccine to avoid the MERS con coronavirus is premature as the kingdom announced four more deaths and 18 new infections. Beirut's Daily Star reports that Lebanon's Minister for the Displaced Alice Shaptini has issued a decision for Druze tenants to evacuate residences belonging to Christians who were forced to immigrate from the Shuv village of Brih during the civil war. It also reports that another Italian political figure has been arrested for trying to help a mafia convicted businessman flee to Lebanon, with the arrests revealing possible links to Lebanon's Kitab leader Amin Jmail's presidential bid. And the Egypt Independent leads reporting that Al-Azhar has denounced the massacres taking place in northeast India, where dozens of Muslims were killed in recent days. It also reports that Russia test-launched several ballistic missiles during planned exercises overseen by President Vladimir Putin, news reporters said as a crisis raged in neighboring Ukraine. And now let's take a look at the top Middle East news from UK papers. The Telegraph leads Middle East News reporting on the latest blast in Syria's second city, Aleppo. The paper says Syrian rebels have reverted to the tactics of the First World War after they tunneled underneath a luxury hotel, being used by government troops in Aleppo to plant explosives that destroyed the building. The Guardian reports on a brutal trade that has been well documented by human rights groups where uh, Bedouin tribes kidnap Ethiopian and Eritrean refugees and sell them on in a chain of exploitation through the Sinai Peninsula. The paper says an estimated 20,000 African refugees have fallen into the hands of a network of traffickers. Now let's take a look at the top Middle East news in international papers. The International New York Times leads Middle East News reporting that the loss of tourism has taken a disastrous toll on Egypt's economy, starving the country of income and badly needed foreign currency. Now many people in Egypt talk, talk not just about short-term pain but long-term damage, as workers forsake years of training and experience to hunt for new jobs outside the industry and students abandon what had been the country's most promising career track. The Times of India reports that Yemeni security forces killed an Al-Qaeda commander suspected of masterminding a wave of kidnap attempts against Western diplomats in a nighttime operation in the capital. And finally, China's Global Times reports that 5,000 Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails went on hunger strike in solidarity with 120 detainees protesting their administrative detention. Minister of Prisoners Affairs Isa Karaj said the one-day hunger strike was a strong message to Israeli prison services that they must stop their aggressive policies against the detainees. And for more updates, please visit levant.tv. 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us again on Monday and bye for now.